Non-adaptive order is seen in something like a maple leaf or leaf forms, where you have extraordinarily complex and beautiful patterns for which you can't imagine what function that pattern, specific function, the pattern serves. And that's a fantastically serious challenge to Darwinism. So okay, if it's just a maple leaf, you can perhaps pass over the maple leaf. But if non-adaptive order, like the maple leaf, uh, permeates the biological world, and if a lot of the taxa-defining novelties seem to be non-adaptive, you now have a nightmarish scenario when the fundamental assumption of Darwinism is that all the novelties in nature are adaptive. It suddenly looks very insecure. Or you can look at the, the beautiful concentric pattern underlying angiosperm flowers. That's all flowers belong to the group called angiosperms. And the basic plan of the flower is concentric circles. You have an outer circle of sepals, then you have an inner circle of petals, then you have stamens and you have the carpel in the middle. And so you have all flowers are built on this beautiful concentric plan. But what organism was that concentric plan adaptive in? What function did that pattern of gene expression originally serve? It's exceedingly difficult to give an adaptive framework in which that, you know, to explain that particular pattern. And if that's, if you can't show that it's adaptive, then you can't give, a, you can't give a Darwinian explanation for it. And this goes on and on and on. The centipede segment levels, uh, then there's the pentadactyl pattern of, of, of the, the vertebrate, vertebrate limb. The same problem occurs there. You can't actually give a adaptive explanation of why, for instance, the same pattern underlies the hind and the forelimbs because in no adult terrestrial uh, tetrapod, uh, terrestrial vertebrate, is the hind limb and the forelimb have the same form. It's adaptive form. In other words, it's always different. In every single adult tetrapod, the actual, the actual structure, like in humans, the, the fore and hind limb have a completely different structure. So how come the identical set of patterns, an identical pattern, underlies both these limbs. It's, it's very difficult to see how that could be adaptive. And so you've got to find an organism in which uh, identical, identical fore and hind limbs existed to give a fully adaptive explanation of how that pattern was sort of incorporated into the tetrapod body plan. And I don't think you can do it. They have assumed that paradigm, the panadaptational paradigm, and they've built a causal explanation of evolution, assuming that that, part, that fundamental assumption is correct. I deny that assumption, and I believe it can't be proven in general to any degree in nature. I think there's almost certainly a vast amount of order which is not adaptive in any specific organism and never was adaptive in any particular organism. And I defy my Darwinian critics to show that it was.